Kwame Nkrumah Osajifo from Ghana, he was the first man to lead Ghana out of British control. And Osajifo Kwame Nkrumah had a vision that he got from Marcus Garvey. So you have the black star in Accra that came with Marcus Garvey, the Black Star Line. He said he wanted to see the United States of Africa. At long last, proud of coming from the battle of Africa, Lord God of mercy. This one is a special Ascended. to once and once who hail from the Lord God of mercy. And thus, Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. an unapologetic Nkrumahist from when I could decipher between good and bad. For me, the image of Kwame Nkrumah represented a huge world of hope, power, and selflessness. Kwame Nkrumah was born in Nkrumfall on the 21st day of September 1909, as the textbooks told us. But soon I got to realize that if Kwame Nkrumah was truly born on that day, he could never have been called Kwame, as Kwame amongst our people. It's only given to Saturday bonds. And 21st September 1909 was not a Saturday. I had heard a lot of stories and myths about BBC's Africa's Greatest Man of the Millennium. For a strange reason, I had a strong urge to dig into the life, wishes and spirituality of the Osajifo Kwame Nwia Nkrumah. So I took a trip to Nkrumfo his place of birth, and I was blown away by the history that met me. Oh yeah, Granny Kwame Nkrumah, you're the great man from Africa. Come liberate my brother. On the day Kwame Nkrumah was born, his mother Elizabeth Nyaniba was cooking in the wattle and dub kitchen when labor punks hit her. She tried to finish cooking the food before calling for help. 
but the pain was so intense she started to crawl and wriggle in pain a few meters away into the yard where she single-handedly delivered the baby Kwame before her neighbors could come to her aid. The little Kwame was seemingly lifeless at birth. No matter what they did to make him cry, he never moved. Not even pinching his hand would make him move. His father, Kofi Nguluma, who doubled as a blacksmith and a hunter, pulled out his rifle and fired this gun several times in the air, hoping that the little Kwame would move. But this again did not yield any results. Just as the family was giving up on the baby, an older woman suggested that the baby might be hungry and therefore they should find a banana and give it to this baby. On the very day that the baby was born, yes, the very second, like magic, the baby started moving his mouth as the fresh banana found its way into his mouth. Little Kwame therefore ate a banana on the day he was born, right at the spot of his birth in the family house. Nyaniba and her husband lived in this two-bedroom apartment, separated by a sitting room. Nyaniba lived in this room, yes, this very room, whilst Kofi Ngoloma lived in the other. Later in life, Kwame Nkrumah inherited the room of his father, Kofi Ngoloma. Elizabeth Nyaneba used to go to the market on the other side of the river Suble, just behind her husband's house. River Suble is translated from the Enzima as the Black River. And this was because the river was black initially until illegal mining activities known in the local parlance as Galamse changed the color to this milky one. River Suble kept the neighborhood very cool with fresh air and fresh fish was also abundant in it. One day, Madame Nyaniba carried her baby on her back, making her way to the market on the other side of River Subli. She had to cross the shallow river. Upon trying to cross it, Kwame Nkrumah, who was resting on her back, said, Mama, you have stepped on a fish. She was shocked when she heard that. When she reached out for the supposed fish, it truly was a fish, a mad fish. Nyaniba got frightened and rushed back, abandoning her going to the market instantly to tell her husband what happened. Together, they went to consult a fetish priest who said the little Kwame would grow to be a huge national asset and a worldwide figure of repute. He asked that the mad fish be cooked for the little Kwame to eat alone. I remember alone and that was what was done on the day Kwame Nkrumah was born that same day witnessed the funeral of his auntie who fell off from the branches of life and Nyaniba remembered that it was a Saturday the little Kwame was either therefore born on the 18th of September or the 25th day of September 1909 which were both Saturdays, a week apart. Mm. True to the words of the fetish priest, Kwame grew up to be brilliant and very studious. He traveled far and near for education and ended up leading the people of the Gold Coast to independence, the very first independence south of the Sahara. We have done the battle and we again rededicate ourselves not only in the struggle to emancipate other territories in Africa. Our independence is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the African continent. 
crowd of Palm and Chroma. We are the king of Africa, Lord God of mercy. This one is a special dedication to ones and ones who hail Palm and Chroma. Lord God of mercy. Even as president, he visited Nkromfo for spiritual reasons and never joked with his spirituality, as told to me by his media man, Reverend Chris Hesse. So Kanka was a prophet. He was a prophet. Where developed prophet? From Guinea. From Guinea. Who Nkuma yes. consulted? Not that he consulted. He, he visited him when he went to Guinea. Wow. He went there and spoke to him because Nkuma had his. He wanted to see that man. But there was nothing wrong. Wow, so you went and saw him. Did yes. you film it? Did he allow you to film it? No. Because it was personal? Yeah, uh, no, no, it's a protocol. Protocol, okay. So there were places he told you don't film here? No, no, no. The man, he himself was well organized. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't a man like somebody sitting somewhere at the corner begging, you know. No, no, no. He was well organized. Was he a Rasta man? What kind of hair did he have? <laughs> he was an old man. Old like, man? His head is like, just like my hair. Mm. He was an old prophet. You see, so Nkuma, Nkuma believed in this African prophet, you know, mm. this prophet, modern prophet. Yeah. Mm. So he went to have a, he went to have a chat with him. Yeah. That's all. Do you know what they talked about? Oh, the, Nkuma was a, a believer. Mm. You know, he, 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 he if, I, if I tell you his other side, mm. his religious side, you'll be, you'll be shocked. Mm. He was a believer. He, he, he fasted every Friday. Wow. Yeah, he fasted every Friday. No food in the Bible. You know, he was, I mean, after that one, uh, I think let's dwell on Kankanya. Every day, every Friday he fasted. Do you know why? Was it because he was born on a Friday? No, 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 no. He was, he had Fridays as a fasting day. Okay. So, Fridays, he, 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 he moves light. Wow. Without eating, without anything. And every Fridays are normally light days. One day, as president of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah traveled to Hafasini, also in the same western region of Ghana, and on his way back to Accra, he called his mother, Nyaneba, and asked if he could come over for a visit. He did not really wait for an answer because he truly wanted to come home. But he asked Nyaneba to prepare a beautiful soup of fresh fish from River Subli. But she regretted that the river was dry and therefore there was no fish in there. Kwame Nkrumah was so sad when he saw River Subli in this distress. So he asked for a cup of water and poured it out as libation, chanting and praying and calling upon the powers of the land to make sure that Subli was brought back to life. And Subli actually came back to life. From that day, Subli never went dry again. Always full and lively. Nobody has ever drowned in this river and the children love to swim in its sweet spiritual waters. The mystery Subli also has more to it than just this. Every president of the Republic of Ghana has sought blessings from it before becoming president except Dr. Abrifa Buzia and Dr. Hila Lemana. President Kufuor lost several times before becoming president. He had to go into the river and take a bath, we were told. The same is said about Nana Akufuado, to the point that during his second tenure of office, the indigents blocked the road and refused to allow him access to the river. But he took a back course and was able to make it to the river where he took a quick wash. And the result? He became president again. Your inspiration for the black nation. No need to fight. We should unite for the future generation. Oh yeah, Kwame Nkrumah, 
Well, you may call that superstition, but the people of Nkronfo believed it. I decided to take a wash myself in the Subli, not for presidency, but to be a kingmaker responsible for choosing proper leaders for Africa. That was what I went into the river praying for. Wake up, wake up the spirit of Africa and uphold the name of a great son of the land. Kwame Nkrumah came several times to hide in his childhood room away from bombers of the UGCC and the United Party. He would excuse himself from his bodyguards and sneak into the room and relax all week away from wicked eyes. Again, I took a rest on Kwame Nkrumah's original bed, though weak and very squeaky from old age to escape from spiritual bad eyes. There are people like you when you are here. You would like to go and sleep where Kwame Nkrumah used to sleep when he was. And the original bed, come bed I used to sleep, is there? When you went there, you saw it at the Muslim, is there? So all we need to do is go and do a DNA. This is the science and technology, it's easy. To prove that, that it's Nkrumah's what? Bed that he used to sleep on. Once that one is established, people will pay top dollar to just come and sleep on that bed for a night. It's a lot of sentiment that, yes, I have slept on Nkuma, the bed of Nkuma. And Nkuma has huge followers all over the world. Huge. Proud of Kwame Nkrumah. We are the king of Africa. Lord God have mercy. This one is a special dedication to once and once who ail Kwame Nkrumah. Lord God have mercy. It's a lot. They attempted to kill Kwame Nkrumah whilst he was president. Remember Ametewe? The gunshots. Some of the bullets were not totally removed from his body, we were told. Remember the bombing at Kulungungu when he was coming all the way from Tinkorogo with the then president of the Burkina Faso, Maurice Yamiogo. The bomb exploded. History tells us that some of the pellets from the bomb might have lodged themselves in the body of Kwame Nkrumah. This resulted in ill health for him when he was in Guinea with Sekutuwe. He had to travel all the way to Bucharest, the capital of Romania, for treatment. He did not return to this country. It was in this house that Kwame Nkrumah asked that he be buried when he died. Yes, in this very house, at this very spot. And in 1972, when he died in Bucharest, Romania, he was first buried in Guinea Conakry. But his friend Sekuture was told about his last wish. So he quickly repatriated the body for reburial in Ghana the same year, 1972. The body was interred at the same place he was born according to his wishes and this was where he ate his first banana on the very first day he was born his body was constantly preserved with chemicals on the budget of the nation ghana and tourists could be shown the body upon request and the tombstone would be rolled over to show the restful remains of the osajifo nevertheless in 1988 President Jerry John Rawlings asked for the body to be sent to Accra for reburial as tourists complained of bad roads and long distances to access the grave of the Osajifo. The family of Kwame Nkrumah refused, saying that as president, he should rather fix the bad roads for easy transport. But Jerry John Rawlings got angry and stopped the financing of the expensive chemicals used in preserving Kwame Nkrumah's body. The body started to decay and the family quickly asked for it to be taken to Accra as ordered by President J.J. Rawlings. Soldiers came from Accra 
on the 11th day of November in 1988 to carry the body, breaking the original tombstones that you see lying down here. Nkrumah's body was taken out for good. For good? I ask you, for good? Jerry John Rollins tried to preserve the body again, but for four years they tried and couldn't. It rather got worse. So they decided to finally bury the body in Accra in the Kwame Nkrumah Mausoleum in 1992. That is supposed to be the final resting place of a man who did not want to be rested there. Mm. Many believe if the remains are not sent back to the original resting place, peace will never be the middle name of Ghana. As it stands now, Nkrumah never dies, despite his several legacies that have been desecrated and abandoned. Remember that Nkrumah lost his father at a very young age. So his mother was his whole world. He started building a house for her. Unfortunately, there was the coup d'etat in 1966. Oh, he died in 1972. It took one contractor from the Ashanti region who was building roads in the area as commissioned by the government at the time. And when he asked to see the house that Nkrumah had built for Elizabeth Nyaniba, he was awed at how outlandish the building was. Nkuma never had his name on any material thing in Ghana, not even a house for himself. When he looked at the building left, right and center, he said, no, this does not befit the house of the first president's mother. So he decided to extend the building and put in more aesthetics. This contractor was E.K. Osei. And E.K. Osei was the one who vetted Ghana's ambassador called Ambassador Osei. Nya never died on the 21st day of October in 1977 and was buried right here in Nkrumfo in a house built for her by her own son Kwame Nkrumah and expanded by a private contractor. On Wednesday, you were here with in tranquility as a little child born to Nyaniba and Kofi Ngoloma and attending school in Hafasini you were full of ability materialism you hated like a canker worm as honesty soon made you a celebrity at Kulungugu the bombs flew around the edge perpetrated by the enemies of serenity Uja bless let no one curse the saying goes the previous regime has signed an MOU with one of the family members of Kwame Nkrumah. So that currently, that project is not in the hands of government anymore. And the MOU was for 18 years. No exit clause. Now, World Bank, by their requirements, before they invest in any project, they want to make sure there is no litigation. So we are required to take over the project. Suddenly, they were not ready to hand over the project to the assembly for the assembly to be able to get a word back. What was this agreement all about? Virtually, 
a very empty agreement. Just hand it over the ten, and there are no. Uh, I'll furnish you with a copy of the agreement so that you can also interrogate it. Uh, no major requirements of renovation, nothing. And since then, the facility has deteriorated. Even washrooms. There is less yet. Legal Center for International Affairs and Diplomacy. Every year, uh, Professor, the Dr. Apia, Julian Apia, every year she brings her student twice for and hundreds of students. Anytime she comes here, I feel sad because these are people who are training to be diplomats who can be selling our product. But when they, go, when they come here, even where to wash to use, it's, not, it's non existent. So I decided that the best thing to do is to abrogate the agreement. I invited the person to come in and she will not. And before I could say Jack, there are some other clauses, other technicalities. Oh, he's a common common relative, you want to take it away from her. So I'm trying to find a way of getting her to understand that common common belongs to her family. But currently, he's a number one state man of this country in terms of leaders. BBC, no, no less a media house like a BBC, declared the man the African man of the millennium. The last hundred years, not even Mandela. At the time, Mandela was also at the peak of his, his popularity. Then Kuma beat him to that, that uh, pool in Who is this Who is this relative? Uh, Auntie Getty, I think she's based in the US. And there's a company that she has. So I'll, I'll, I'll finish you there. But basically, that's a stumbling block. That's why we have not been able to. But I think we cannot continue like that. Anytime I go there, I feel sad. When you told me you were going there, I bow down my head in shame because I've traveled to a few places. I have been to the boyhood site of WEB Du Bois in Great Barrington, US. You know, Nkuma brought Du Bois here to work for him. You should go and see how Americans have developed that boyhood site. A number of tourists that come in every year to that site. We can do much, 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 much better. Currently, we are building a new office complex. So I've decided that if we're able to take over the Muslim, we put the three, three locations, the Muslim, the vacation residence, and then the mother's house into one tourist package and get some investors who are interested to do a PPP with government. Develop it. My brother, it can fetch us a lot of money. Tourists come here, they go to Nuzlozo. So you come a package. You look to Kwame Nkuma. And people have emotional attachment to the name Kwame Nkuma. That's like you. I can see you are Nkuma, 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 Nkuma. You don't even come from the area. And you travel outside, even in Africa, especially in East and Central Africa. Nkuma is so big. When you come to Ghana, in fact, entering our district, you should have seen a huge monument of Kamakuma to show that this is the land of Kamakuma. But we are not doing all these things and then it's always a lip service. This is linked up with the total liberation of the whole African continent. You voiced it as tender as a standard and made your mark as the black press. Before I left Nkrumfo, I broke down. Why would a man's last wishes be so disrespected? Did Nkrumah grow bigger than Ghana? For that matter, should his last wishes be disrespected? The man wanted to be buried right there in the compound where he was born, a few meters away from the kitchen of Yaneba. He was buried there, yes, but just for a while. When the nation under J.J. Rollins felt that he had grown bigger than the whole of Ghana and therefore had to be buried in the capital. Spiritually, does this ring a bell? Have we desecrated the legacy of Kwame Nkrumah? Spiritually, would Ghana know peace? Why did they take out the body of Kwame Nkrumah?
from its original place of burial in Nkonfo to Accra. I sought to answer all these questions. And mm, I even posed questions to politicians in the area. It's a very sensitive matter. And I, 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 let me remind myself that I'm the member of parliament for where Kwame Nkrumah was born. And also remind myself that I've been a minister of state. It's uh, a very fine line between the, uh, the, the states, Ghana, fighting to claim Nkrumah as the founder of the Republic of Ghana bringing him to the capital and the reality that our tradition as a country demands that he has to be where he belongs and so that is really a very delicate and sensitive matter but i empathize with the people of Ingofo and the people of his and their family we always feel that that is where people should be paying pilgrimage to not also losing sight of the fact that the cover is bigger uh, an african icon and so i think that's where i leave it because it is a matter that i'm sure uh, can be debated and we have to revisit this issue at some time if you were president of ghana would you bring Nkrumah's body back to uh, well, I'm happy that I'm not a, a president of Ghana to make such such decisions. Uh, probably, I, I don't think I have the power to do that. Uh, and I'm happy I'm where I am. Why did they move the body? Would the body ever be brought back to Nkrumfo for the man's peaceful rest? Well, the desecration of a legend life the desecration of the thoughts of a legend the desecration of the holiness of a great legend so in the burden of knowledge how would the life of the osage for kwame Nkrumah impact your own lives in contemporary times in the burden of knowledge now that you know what would you do be an annual mini obafe Zunda Kagani, Meza Kaye, Ye I'm Pabango, Mokaya, Fifia, Nukai Nawa, Banaim, a baden, Lele and Jima Singa Bekune, Lele and Jimawa, Singa Berry. It's been the African History Class. <laughs>